Welcome back, survivors and hunters alike. I'm the Survivalist, and we return to Monster Hunter World. And the reason we're back is you can see in the top right-hand corner there, Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And that is coming out one week from now. So we're going to do a couple of episodes to get the series a little bit started up, just by going in and having some fun with a few multiplayer hunts this time. So let's just start game. There we are, the Survival this, And we're just going to search for just anything like that player type anything we're basically just going to go in and see if we can help with a few assigned things i usually like to go for a larger kind of lobby that way you get more options of who you can kind of go in and help so what we're going to aim to do with the next couple of episodes are just a few multiplayer hunts help people out say if they have any assigned ones they're working through the story mode a little bit more any optionals they're trying to work through we're basically just going going to be a support gunner in a way and that's something the light bowgun is actually a good role for it. It's something you can kind of argue back and forth about whether you anybody really likes being the sport class, but considering the light bowgun, how act easy it is to apply the sass effects and just keeping at a distance, it makes for a good role for it. I do feel like it is one of the more blander weapons. I have to say it doesn't have a good enough identity for itself in a way. Like, the bow does all of the mobility and rapid-fire stuff faster, and the heavy bow, get, heavy bow gun does all the damage much better. The light bow gun is kind of this weird in-betweener. I think one of the issues is that it's kind of special move, whereas you have the dragon piercer in the bow, and the wyvern heart and wyvern snipe in the heavy bow gun. The light bow gun's wyvern blast is a really weird one to work with, because it's not a direct attack against the monster it's more like a it i would say tactical is part of it but it's such an indirect means of doing the damage because you either can attack it yourself which won't give you the highest damage from it or you have to let the monster be the one to hit it and the thing is you don't really you can kind of control the monster as an it'll attack where your position is but i don't know it's this weird kind of indirect means of it with Iceborne, there is going to be a new mod for the light bow guns that will let you kind of sh change that. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll go for this one for the feline sharpshooter skill. But in Iceborne, there's going to be a new light bow gun mod that will let you kind of shoot it as a grenade launcher in a way. And once that sets in the ground, if a monster does hit it, it'll do, I think, at least four times. Oh, excuse me. Seems like it does around double to four times the amount of damage a regular one would do and has a high flinch chance. The only problem is that really opens you up for a huge risk-reward situation where you almost... You want to use it when the monster is going to charge you, but what if it doesn't flinch and you suddenly have a master rank coming at you? I don't know if... Uh, we could do Behemoth, but I think I'm looking for something more traditional monster hunter. Uh, we could try that. Nothing special slams. Let's do some SOS. See if we can find anybody there. Start with the sign. Ah. We may. We may come back to that one. Because that is... For some reason, that one is always in the sign that people are looking for help with. Or it's always in the SOS list. And I don't know why. Ah, that's okay. I ah, definitely don't want to do the Ancient Lushen one. Some of the monsters just hit for ridiculous amounts of damage, especially in the gunner armor. So you know what? We are going to do that one in the assigned here. Where was it? And the reason we're... Oh, actually... No, yeah, we will join this one. The gunner armor is one that's always been weird. And I can see for the bow and the heavy bow gun, but the light bow gun's kind of been jipped out a bit, a bit. Whereas, you kind of have, yes, the higher mobility, so you can avoid more stuff. But that generally means that you're going to have distance, which means the monsters are going to try charging you more. And generally the charges are some of the most damaging attacks the monsters can do. So you're setting yourself up to avoid the minor hits, but be more targeted by the heavier hits. And granted the elemental effects or the elemental resistance is higher, but how often are you going to get fireballed compared to being run over? I don't know, it's kind of this weird mix form. I do love the light bowgun playstyle in the world. It is so fun. I have to admit, though, I prefer prefer the light bowguns more the way they were. Like, the elemental shots feel so much weaker in this 
and world compared to some of the other games. Okay, so they're going up against the Pink Raytheon. We will snag a couple of goodies there. Let's head out and see if we can help them out a bit, because, oh boy. Looks like they're going up against Pink Raytheon and Ligion at the same time. So we better equip a Flash Paw, that way once we get right down in there, we can kind of help get a little breathing room to them. Yeah, they're both right down there. Uh-oh. Okay, who got it? There we go. Give him a little recovery boost, and let's start working on Raytheon here. Now, I will also, after this hunt... Oh. Was not expecting Zitsuyaku to show up. But he's actually not a bad guy to have around. He's like a basically a free guaranteed flash bot against the monster, so it's not bad to have him present. It's just that we have Legiana and Pink Raytheon at the same time to try to deal with, so. Kind of getting to be a full house here. But I will show the light bow gun build that I am using for it. If you are still working your way through the base game, ooh, that kind of hurt. Definitely aim at making yourself the defender weapons. They are ridiculously strong for the game. Okay, so that pops them up a little bit so they can stay in it. Yeah, I was thinking about putting a status on Pink Raytheon, but they've got a mounted, so, or her mounted, so we can just kind of do a few plinker flinker hits. Let's see if we can break the wings for them. Yeah, I think that was the wings we were working on done. Oh, tail's off. Nice work. That's one of the things I've actually been finding as I've been helping on online hunts. Is that nobody really aims for the tail with the cutting weapons. They always want to go for the head. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because they don't need anything from the tail. Or what, but it's... It just always seemed weird that everybody would try striking for the head. Like, even if you don't need the tail materials, you still make the hunt so much easier if you can take off some of what the monster can use against you. Ooh, there is some nice damage to the head there. There we go. Pretty well done. Just a little salute sticker. I do wish that there was a little bit of an easier way to get into the text chat for World with it being on PC, but it is what it is. So just got a spike there, and we'll carve up the body. But yeah, definitely make the defender weapons that got introduced. They are, they're basically meant to be the catch-up mechanism to go from base world to Iceborne if you haven't played, if you only pick up the game pretty late. But they are ridiculously powerful. Like, this is the fully upgraded Defender Light Bow Gun 5. It does have an attack boost, so take off, I think it's 7 attack, and take off 10% affinity. But I'll show you the full skill rundown when we're back in the hollow. Go through our rewards, take a look at the end screen there. Not too bad of one. We've got all the casings from our shots flying about, but the longsword user definitely has the best part of the end screen. Probably pro nah, probably one of the better looking end screens you can get. It's basically just your screenshot of the monster right before the final blow. Anything good in decoration? Eh, not really. So, ah, eh, unfortunately we didn't do too any. Should have tried getting the paralysis off on him. That's one of the things with the lipo gun is I never use the status effects really on my own to hunt. 
rarely I may, I may do the sleep bombing or the paralysis, but on my own, I usually just stick to straight damage because I can kind of pick up the monster's patterns and habits. Let's just refresh our stock of everything we might have used up. Okay, and now on to the equipment info proper. So, yeah, I, the Defender Light Bowgun 5 is probably the most powerful one. I think it's 287 base raw. I like to do the recoil suppressors and the reload assist. Definitely one of each at least. Kind of makes you more mobile. And I have the... Oh, I need to get another drink here. Ah, there we go. The Teostra Gamma, the Nergagante Gamma, the Draken Vamraces Alpha, the Nergagante Coil Gamma, and the Nergagante Gamma. The reason I got all these was... Actually... Oh, I guess I have Nergigante Hunger up on right now. I didn't realize that, but let me go into skill info. Yeah, so the reason I basically got these was to make this the highest DPS bowgun I could. So attack boost level 7, critical eye level 7, critical boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, maximum might, normal shots, and agitator is just kind of a throwaway one. I probably would not recommend you using this though. One of the things you want about a set, and I will state this vehemently, there is no meta in Monster Hunter. You play what you want, how you want to have as much fun as you want. If you want to be a speedrunner, okay, go speedrun it. But that's your choice. Don't say there's actually a meta out there. As long as you are able to A, defeat the monster before the quest ends, and B, survive through to the quest being completed, that's all I should worry about. Have fun. If you want to be a fashion hunter, be a fashion hunter. As long as you're meeting those two requirements, I'd say you can play however you want to with the game. And the reason the meta, I think, gets something talked about a bit, I'm just going to take those two and let's just stack on a bunch of fresh stuff. People kind of make the, this idea that there's a meta because of just... I'm actually not too sure why people put in a meta for Monster Hunter. I think it's just that you want the monster as dead as quickly as possible. And yeah, if you have to farm, I could see that. But you also want to still have fun with it, too. Oh, hello. So I like kind of going for a mix that has both damage and utility in it. This is just so that way, if I'm helping out on hunts, I can be okay with DPS. Like, ooh, speaking of, here's a very good one to hunt and help out with. Although, you got this far and you didn't unlock the other two camps? Always go and unlock your camps, people. These make hunting so much easier. But we'll go along, try to help these guys, help out Abyssal Arg with getting up the uh, the Hunter rank unlock. And I'm a bit of an old school monster hunter. You can tell I joined a lot earlier than World because I still run off towards where kind of the depart door is. Freedom Unite, you have the depart door. Monster Hunter 3, you had the kind of landing that you would go up to. Uh, 3 Ultimate. I don't even know what 3 Ultimate was, because I always played that solo. 4 Ultimate. I tried doing that multiplayer, but I stopped at G rank just because 3DS, I didn't have the great connection, so... It's a little hard to hunt the monster when it's rubber banding from left and right, left and right, and you're the gunner trying to get an accurate shot on it. But I've always played Light Bowgun throughout all the series. I admit, when I went through Monster Hunter World, first time around, I played as the bow. Because I wanted to see what it was. The Dragon Piercer really appealed to me because finally Gunners had a very good way of taking on and cutting off the tails. If you've played Gunner, you know it is a pain in the ass to... Tr Ooh. Oh, it does happen to the best of us. It's something that's going to come up, and it looks like we might even have a little bit of rubber banding with the connection here, but... There we go, we should be able to handle this guy solo and wear him down a bit. One thing about Monster Hunter is, as long as you learn the patterns, you will be very well rewarded. Let's see if we can get a little environmental trap off on him. Come on, there we go, perfect. And we can just shoot this off a few times. There we go. There we 
go. See, you can kind of get him to attack where you want by positioning smartly, but it's still... Let's see if we can get even a second one off on him. No, he's probably got a good paralysis resist now. Uh-oh. Okay, where is my flash pod? There we go. Basil is probably one of the monsters. If you're gunning, you will easily recognize all of his patterns. Yeah, just the landing. Oh, oh God, be very careful when you're fighting, especially Tempered Basil, is look out for the scales on the ground. His eye just caught a little bit of a smoke steam that came off of it. But if those blow, they can do a lot of damage to you. Slide out the way of that. And get out of the way of him. And this is probably why I love Monster Hunter. It just feels like such a nice back and forth between you and the monsters. And let's let him come around again. Down you go. We'll try to keep this bomber grounded for as long as we can. There we go, park break. Very nice. Oh, another park break. Uh oh. This is where you get into trouble. The game is a bit better with its kind of roar locks, but there are still some monsters that are very terrible for it. Teostra and Lunostra are the pair that are the worst for when they roar. Ooh. Oh, nice. Got oh, oh boy. Yeah, those two, basically the Fire Elder Dragons, their locks are guaranteed unless you have earplugs of any kind, you are going to get hit. There we go. Okay, let's quickly make those up again. There we go. Okay, so we're all loaded up. Ah, uh, do do. You know what? I think we'll keep working on the one that we started with. I don't need any basal do or basalgeous materials. I still don't know what the best pronunciation of that is. Okay, get that for a little bit of stamina up. That'll help. And let's see about taking ourselves up basal. Because I don't think it's Basil Goose. That's, I don't know, it just sounds a little off for him, doesn't it? And yeah, we're just going to harass him a bit. Oh, harassment's over. And put that down for him. Uh-oh. There we go. I think there's the second one to be a capture. No, it doesn't look like it. I thought they would try, try to capture it if they had it in a shock trap. Huh. Oh my god. Okay, this is interesting. I was not expecting to have been able to get him to limp solo. Okay, I'm trying to remember where he's going to go. I think we want to go through here now. Because he's going to fly his way to the nest. I wonder if they were working on this one and then the other one showed up. That's the only explanation I can have for managing this. Because I don't think there should be any way that Light Bowgun was able to do this much for... Yeah, it just feels weird unless the health chain... I don't know. It's 
bizarre to me that we were able to get this one down to... Okay, looks like we're all set, so actually let me switch out to that. Self killed. Uh oh. No, where? What? 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 Okay, that's a bit bizarre. I don't know why he flew away from here. I don't think we've used any potions. Yeah, we haven't had to heal yet. No. Did he drop something as he was coming up this way? Now, this is a little odd. Whenever you have a monster that is basically right at death, normally they stick around their final area. It's weird that he kind of came out as he has. Or it. I don't know if it's a male or a female there. It's not really... A super good way to tell. Oh. Well, damn. I was really not expecting us to take this one out on our own. Especially given that there should be three of those guys working on the other one. Well, let me see. I did pick up the first aid mint, didn't I? No, I did not. Okay, well, I'll have a potion then. And we'll work our way down to... Oh! Looks like they got this one in the nest. So, we'll slide on down and see about helping that out. Put snag the herbs so we can get the last potion. Ah, shoot. He's going to bomb. Oh, crap. Okay, let's quickly get ourselves healed up. We do not want to be the one to... Oh. Oh, well, that was pretty simple. Oh, actually, there's a tail out here somewhere, right? Where is it? Oh, right here. There we go. Pretty successful hunt and help them get up that hunter rank unlock. Once you know what you're doing with the light bowgun, you can have a lot of fun just keeping your distance and working back and forth. I love that little almost dance in a way between you and the monster. So let's take... Actually, let's take a look. Yeah, end screen ain't anything too spectacular here. Hey, we up 205 hunter rank. Ah, look at that. Three parts destroyed and Slinger Sniper. Not too shabby, if I say so myself. So I'll probably do another episode of this tomorrow, just so that way keep into the spirit of Monster Hunter and Super Eager for Iceborne. Oh, I can't wait. I don't know how much of it will actually really be new for the Light Bowgun. There are a couple of new mods, such as the Evading Reload that I really want to try out, and the... Wyvern Blast shot thing. The grenade launcher, basically. Actually, no, not that one. Yeah, we want to restock that, but that can go because we want the bombs and we want the flash pods. There they are. And that's everything restocked. And one of the basils that we just helped capture. Actually, the one that we did help capture because his ta poor tail's gone. So, I think we'll leave this episode of Monster Hunter right here. Thank you all very much for joining me on another episode on the channel. If you do like the series, be sure... Actually, I can't even say it's a series right now, but if you do like the video, be sure to leave a like or comment, let me know, and look forward to more Monster Hunter in the very near future. Until next time I see you, survivors and hunters, please remember as always to take care and stay alive!